Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how exactly to smash your next GCSE maths paper. No matter what point, what level you're at, I'm going to show you how you can make massive improvements, save your grade if you're in paper 2 or 3, um, and in general all the advice that I wish I had before doing my exams, uh, as well as the exact routine that I followed to make sure that I had all of the content fresh in my brain just before the exam uh, and I had the right amount of practice. So let's just get straight into it. The first thing is to not worry about the previous papers that you've just sat. Whether it's your mock exams or previous GCSC papers like paper one or paper two, don't think about them too much um, because at the end of the day, you don't want to get into your own head too much. Um, so keep in mind that grade boundaries change, um, different papers are diff different difficulties sometimes they give a few harder papers at the start and they compensate for it by giving easier papers later but the point is that you want to almost ignore what's out of your control um, which is what's already happened so focus on what's going to come ahead and just try to maximize your performance in the upcoming exam if you do feel like your previous papers didn't go very well the key thing to do is to think back as to what might have gone wrong uh, and reflect uh, maybe write down a few notes as to what exactly you think you could improve for next time whether it's time management uh, just the nerves and the fear of having to sit the exam and not being able to think straight um, or maybe it's particular content maybe it's some topics that you forgot to revise forgot to go over in as much depth as you thought you needed to 100 percent that's important to note down because you can really focus and hone in on those areas for your next exam if you think your previous exams did go well, then that's great. Just reflect on what you need to do continuously to improve even more. Next is to nail all of the content. Now, there are many different parts to the specification for GCSE Maths, such as algebra, geometry, probability and trigonometry. So make sure that you have a look at all of those different sections and make sure that you know how to do uh, the most important calculations for each section so for example with the geometry you need to know all of your equations and how to use them algebra you need to know how to solve quadratics quadratic inequalities um, you know do nth term calculations things like that uh, but yeah make sure that you have done at least one practice question for each type of question that can come up um, but yeah, if you, if you see a topic question when you're going through the specification and you're like, hmm, I don't really remember doing a question of that type, do it and do actually as many as you can um, so that you are familiar with it. For me, the one topic that I really had to focus on before my exams were the vectors. Uh, and in particular, it was the um, vector ratios. I don't know if you're familiar, but with uh, they typically use lambda and mu and you need to do complex calculations with working out. The ratios of different vectors um, but yeah I struggle with those a bit so then I had to go over those right before my exam uh, and what I would do is go on YouTube um, this is a great uh, sort of strategy to use go on YouTube search for that topic and grade 9 exam questions uh, look for the first few videos that come up uh, there are some great channels like the GCSE Maths Tutor um, Hegarty Maths uh, the Maths Genie I think basically start watching those videos as soon as they show a new question, pause, try the question yourself um, and really try. Don't just, you know, half-heartedly make an attempt and then look at the answer. Really try as if you were in, a, in an exam. Um, and then, yeah, if you, if you get an answer, then play the video, skip to where they show the solution. If you are correct, great, take it um, and just make sure that you've used the right method and everything and it wasn't just a fluke. If you're wrong, then watch the full explanation once, maybe even twice. Make sure you fully understand not only what they've done, but why they've chosen to take those steps, because that helps you understand their chain of reasoning um, for why they sort of did, took that approach to solving the question. Um, and that'll help you solve similar questions. Then you repeat, go with the next question, look at it, pause it, try it yourself fully, and then look at the answer, check if it's correct or not. Repeat this again and again, and then maybe you can even try this with topic questions on PDFs on websites like The Maths Genie. Um, but yeah, make sure that you, you really target and focus on the topics that you know you're weak at, because at this point, you probably know a couple of topics that you are slightly weaker at, even if you can do questions in them. When it gets a bit tough, you sometimes get a bit confused. 100% focus on those because then you're, you're sort of evened out your skills 
um, and no matter what comes up you'll have at least a good fighting chance in the exam. So yeah, the amount of progress that you can make just by rinsing and repeating the strategy just before your exam is crazy and um, I would definitely recommend it. Now an important exam technique tip is time management. Some people really do struggle with time management in these exams. I've had comments from people saying that they're able to solve the questions but it takes them a little bit longer to actually find the solution and think through it in the exam. My practical advice to you is number one, stay calm and composed in the exam. Try and think through what you've done at home and how you can apply the same strategies in the exam. These exams are not the end or be all. You want to try and do as well as you can, but at the end of the day, they, they don't determine everything. So don't put a, an immense amount of pressure on the exams. Plus you have multiple papers. Try to think clearly, take a sip of water, try to relax your body a little bit and, and think clearly. And another thing is five marks at the start of the paper is equivalent to five marks at the end of the paper. They're, they're worth the same. So if there's a really difficult five or six mark question at the end that you're struggling with, because those can often be quite difficult, um, don't try and spend loads and loads of time on that when you might have missed out slightly easier questions um, earlier in the paper or maybe you want to check back the rest of your work but you've made a good attempt at that last question of course um but yeah just remember that the marks are easier to get at the start of the paper so focus on trying getting trying to get as many of those as possible without mistakes throughout and then as you go on the questions will get harder harder but um yeah, make sure that you are sort of bagging as many easy marks as possible. Don't rush through. There are so many people that rush through the easy questions because they just want to get onto the hard questions and finish the paper and get the maximum marks. The best strategy is just paying attention and care to all of the questions equally. Um, that's what I did to get, you know, really high marks in both my papers. Also, allocate time on different questions based on the amount of marks. This is quite obvious, but if there is a five mark question, spend more time on that than a two or three mark question. Um, and it can also be helpful to look at the number of marks to understand how difficult that question is, because sometimes you see a question and you're not sure how difficult it's supposed to be because you might think, oh, I need to do this really complicated thing. You have some ideas in your head and you're like, okay, I need to do this quite complex method. It looks like quite a difficult one. But then you look at it and it's only two marks. Um, and the best thing to do there is to think about what's the easier way to do this problem. There must be a shortcut that I'm missing. So try and go for that. If you can't think of it, that's okay. You can, you know, sort of just move to the next question. Um, make sure that you do come back to it later but yeah use the marks allocated to give you an idea for what the question is really asking you to do. Next is to do full pass papers. Once you've smoothed into any bumps and gaps of understanding within any particular topics you want to move to doing full timed practice papers because this is a really good emulation of what the real exam is like um, and especially if you struggle with thinking clearly in the real exam and sometimes the nerves can get to you. It's really important that you do a full-time pass paper because you sort of have that time pressure, maybe if you have a timer in front of you, that I need to finish this many questions in this much time and the time is ticking and you can see it ticking and that's what gets a lot of people and can get in their head. But I would say find pass papers from previous years, do the full paper under time conditions, um, and don't don't just do a single question, check the mark scheme, do another question, check the mark scheme. It's not it's, it's not really like the exam, it's not how the exam will be. So do it exactly how you would in the real thing. Then at the end, go and look at the mark scheme, make sure that you've you know got as many questions as you can right. Then for the questions that you don't get correct, use the mark scheme to try and understand what you've done wrong. But oftentimes the mark schemes can be difficult to understand because they show you what to do but they don't show you why they did those steps and again this is where youtube videos come in for most of the papers there are great walkthroughs online um, by many different youtubers um, you can uh, have a look by just searching the exact paper reference code and year and exam board on youtube and then you have walkthroughs by uh, youtubers experts showing you what they did and why and they'll explain um, sort of their thought processes for doing those questions. Keep up your daily practice as well. I would recommend doing Corbett Maths five a day as I recommended in my uh, previous video on GCSE Maths. 
just get regular practice in because you can cover so much ground in such a short amount of time if you do this every day for a couple months. Um, if you do have your exams very soon though, as people currently do, I would say do more daily practice and try and do the topic questions, the practice papers as I said before. Do as much as you can, as much maths as you can to basically make sure that when you go in, you have so much memory of doing these questions that it's quite likely that you'll see a similar question or sometimes even the same question in your exam. So yeah, just, just do as much maths as you can. In terms of my exam day routine, first thing is the night before, don't sleep way too late trying to, you know, cram doing like questions or, or learning topics. Just get a good night's sleep because you need to be thinking sharp, you need to be thinking straight for your um, exam. Eat a good breakfast, stay hydrated, make sure you have all your equipment, your rulers, pencils, pens, whatever, um, and your calculator if it's a calculator exam. But yeah, these micro stresses can sometimes add up if you, you know, forget equipment, if you haven't slept much, if you didn't really eat breakfast, they can add up and then in the exam you're sort of just very uncomfortable and stressed so that can affect your performance make sure that you basically got all of your fundamentals covered um, and yeah when you go in just try and take deep breaths if you need to if you get really nervous and just do as well as you can remember these are not the end of the world they are GCSE they are your first public exam so they can be very scary but you know it, from, from lots of the maths exams, they won't be your first uh, exams in the, in the exam season. So yeah, you, you should be okay. And yeah, that's all I have to say today. Um, best of luck for your paper, whether it's paper one, two or three. I am recording this now just before paper three. So best of luck for your last maths exam, if that is you. And yeah, good luck and I'll see you in the next video.